Okay, so let's take a look at this worksheet just to go over some of the uh, things we've uh, learned recently, both on rates of change and limits. So the first one, find the average rate of change of the function r of t equals t ln t on the interval 1e. Okay, so all we're doing is uh, asking for a rate of change over an interval. Now our interval is a little strange and that you know we're starting at one and going to e but e is a perfectly fine real number so nothing uh, wrong there so the average rate of change for this case would be your r value at the later point e minus your r value at the earlier point one over e minus one the difference in the x values r of e well if r of t is just t ln t so this is e ln e and then minus r of 1 would be 1 ln 1 all over e minus 1 all right and then we can just simplify a little bit so e ln e ln e is 1 so i just get e times 1 or e minus okay ln1, on the other hand, is 0, so I get e minus 0 over e minus 1, or in other words, e over e minus 1. It's not the most common number, but that's a perfectly fine answer. e over e minus 1 is the average rate of change of that function over the interval 1e. Okay, so now... On the given graph of f of x, indicate the graphical representation of the average rate of change of f of x over 1, 3. So we're just going to actually draw on the graph what the how we could represent the average rate of change of this function between 1 and 3. Well, as remember, that really corresponds to just a secant line. So there we go. The slope of that indicated line is the average rate of change over 1, 3. All right. And then we want the instantaneous rate of change of f of x at x equals 1. Well, if you remember, instantaneous rate of change, what we've learned so far is just that's the slope of the tangent line. That's supposed to be a line. <laughs> All right, so in this case, the slope of that is the instantaneous rate of change at x equals 1. Okay, now notice that we talked about uh, average rate of change approximating instantaneous rate of change, that this particular secant line does not make a very good <laughs> approximation of this tangent line at 1. Um, if, But you see that if we actually move to points closer and closer, then as we you know move this way, you would see that the secant line became a better and better uh, approximation of the tangent line, but we'll get into that later. All right. So now let's take a graph and try and determine some limit values. All right, so first one here is uh, the limit as x uh, approaches negative 4 of f of x. Okay, so here's x and negative 4. So what we're doing is we're going to look at going along here and along here. Now the problem is as we approach negative 4 from the left, we appear to be going to the value of 2. As we approach from the right, we appear to be going to the value 3. So even though both one-sided limits um, exist, they're not equal. So this is a does not exist. All right. Now, the way we'd write what we have if we wanted to, it doesn't say to do it here, but the limit as x approaches negative 4 from the right 
of f of x is 3. The limit as x approaches negative 4 from the left of f of x is 2. And these don't agree, hence our answer that the limit does not exist. Okay. The limit as x approaches 1 of f of x. Okay. So in the graph here, from one side we're coming down like this, other side we're coming up like this. Now, there is this hole um, as we get to x equals 1 and this redefined point down here, but the limit doesn't care about that. As it's coming up here and down here, it's headed for the value 3. So this would equal 3. The limit as x approaches 3. All right. Well, as we're approaching 3, we're headed down here. We're headed down here. Okay, these appear to be going off to negative infinity in both ways. So we could say that the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x is negative infinity, even though we realize that it does not exist. But when it doesn't exist in a way that we can say infinity or negative infinity, that's what we state. So, all right, what else? Limit as x approaches 4. Okay, limit as x approaches 4. So we're coming down here, we're coming up here, and as we approach 4, well, we appear to be going to the value 1, even though we have a hole, actually, when we reach 4, that doesn't matter because the limit doesn't care what's happening at that point. How about 6? Well, this it seems strange, but it's actually the simplest one because from both sides, we're headed to the value 2. Now, it happens to match what actually happens at, of the function at 6, but that's not a concern of the limit. That's just a nice circumstance that we'll talk about later. All right, and then the limit as x approaches negative 4 from the right. Okay, we did this before. So the limit as x approaches negative 4 from the right of f of x, in other words, this again here, goes to the value 3. Okay, so that was using a graph in each case, um, seeing whether the light, right and left both exist, and if they do both exist, or do they agree? And um, we saw cases where they existed but did not agree, where they agreed despite the fact that there was a point elsewhere, where they agreed despite the fact that there was no other point. Um, they were both headed to the same thing, but it's not something that exists. And the most usual case, which is they're headed to the actual point of the function there.